The session was about talking truth to power, uh, how people have the courage to speak up. Uh, if something's wrong or manifestly illegal, uh, there's a tendency for people to say nothing. Uh, institutionally, if you look at Hillsborough, you look at the Mid-Staffordshire hospitals, you look at Savile, uh, all sorts of uh, offences have been committed within our public institutions uh, and somehow no one's had the courage to speak out uh, and speak truth to power. My own background, of course, is the armed forces where there was prisoner abuse. Uh, I was the lawyer who spoke out against the, the abuse of prisoners. Uh, so I'm intrigued as to why this happens and what we might do to uh, change the culture uh, in which we live and in which we educate our children so that they're equipped uh, to speak truth to power uh, when they take their place uh, in the public sphere. But the pressing question is how we might foster this spirit of speaking truth to power in our schools so that we don't have mid-staffs, we don't have Sabbath, we don't have ill-treatment of prisoners or someone says, no, stop. As I say, I've got very limited experience, but I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you. As the chaplain, I get sent in to teach religious studies uh, to the junior boys as they arrive. Sherbourne is a Christian school with a Christian foundation. Our vision statement says man is made in the image of God. It speaks about the fundamental equality of all men and the love of your neighbour. It's a message we try to emphasise and reiterate and put into practice. Where I do find prejudice in the classroom, uh, I confront it, tell people or, or, or get the pupils to examine what they might have said or what they might have written, ask them why, ask them to, to look at that and, and see whether they think they're right or not, and also to challenge that directly itself. So I, I hope to confront it, uh, explain why they might be misunderstanding it, uh, and also hoping that that will foster something of that spirit uh, in the school community and beyond. I've also given quite strict moral sort of guidance, I hope, if something is going wrong in the house, for instance, someone's being bullied, someone's being beaten up, I expect them to intervene either personally or go and get someone to do something about it and that this sort of behaviour won't be tolerated. When we had our induction week, the zero tolerance for discrimination on the grounds of race, gender and sexual orientation are, it seems to me, a perfect platform for equipping our students for the future. What I'm talking about is human rights. The instruction of those rights in the classroom, the practice and enforcement of those rights in our school communities. Human rights are not only about human dignity, as is Christianity, but championing those rights and standing up for the individual. They are values in and for a secular age, regardless of the religious makeup of our schools. So speaking truth to power needs to be identified, encouraged, practiced, rewarded, mirrored in the conduct of staff, even set out in the school's vision or charter understanding that speaking truth to power is not about disloyalty, <coughs> which we will, we will try and foster loyalty, but it's actually loyalty to the institution and to confront misguided loyalty and to hold to those values that we hold dear. And I'm looking forward, I hope, to a future where your students have the moral compass and moral courage to assume that the honours which the state will bestow on you and speak truth to power instead. And if we can do that, find that in our culture, make that part of our school life, then as Victoria, Victoria Corrin remarked, it needs to be identified like the Higgs boson particle bottled and passed around every school in the country. Thank you very much. Human rights values can't just live in the courtroom. I've, I've learned that um, in now well over a decade of uh, being Director of Liberty at the National Council for Civil Liberties to, to really thrive in a healthy, uh, healthy, flourishing liberal democracy. Human rights values have to, have to live in the living room and the newsroom and the parliament chamber and yes, in the classroom. And so I think there are two incredibly important ways in which you as leaders 
as schools um, protect human rights values or not. And the first is in the culture of your school and the treatment of the young people. Um, and, and because you are the power, how are you going to get, how are you going to instill the values and the culture that allow them to feel that they can speak truth to to your power? And that I can is not always easy. As the director of Liberty, I'm, I'm here to, to talk to the head teachers about instilling human rights values in the classroom. That's both in terms of the way that uh, the way that schools behave towards their pupils, but also in terms of conveying the human rights values in the Human Rights Act and the Convention on Human Rights to to these kids. They're so important as uh, as, as future citizens and parents and head teachers and politicians. I think that if uh, in, in work like mine you're always just responding to, uh, to the latest outrage and not thinking about the next generation of government and of citizenry. You're possibly always fighting the alligators and never draining the swamp. So this is a really important opportunity to, to talk to the leaders who, who shape young minds. I, I want to just say this. The Human Rights Act is our modern Bill of Rights. It also it also flows from a very, very old tradition. It's just the latest moment in that tradition. It's the post-war human rights settlement. But some of the values in there, in particular the fair trial values, go right back to 1215 and Magna Carta. Because I think the most important human rights value of all, in a way, is equal treatment or empathy. Or, or perhaps even for your kids, you know, the sense that we're not being hypocritical about the rule of law or about human rights. Perhaps it's about practicing what you preach, Nicholas. Perhaps, perhaps it's really as simple as some of those old adages, because in my experience of doing this work now for 13 years, I've never really met someone who's got a problem with human rights. We all love human rights, our own. It's other people's we've got a bit of a problem with. And now I'll stop, and um, perhaps we can have some, some questions and discussion. Thank you. I, I will talk to any teacher. I will talk to a teacher in the fee-paying sector and in uh, and in the state sector. I, I think the, the important thing here is that we're talking about teaching and we're talking about children, and we're trying to make sure that they feel respected and protected in the school environment, but also that they are equipped with human rights values before they go out into the world. Never give up is another good thing to teach your pupils, however much ignominy is heaped upon you whilst you're pursuing truth.